everybody. This is Keith Gleason, host of Indie Comics Relay, creator of the Mighty Mascots, and promoter for the Plastic City Comic Con. And I'm here with another creator commentary. Before we get into that, just want to remind everybody to check out HeroEnvy.com, the source where you can get all the Mighty Mascots issues along with all my other comic work. And you can also hire me on as a letterer to help make that project shine. All right. Moving on. So I haven't done one of these in a long time. I, I did the creator commentary for issue one and I had it was so long. I had to break it up into two parts. So I, I don't know how long issue two will take. I, I mean, I want to go through it pretty thoroughly with you guys. So if anything, if it goes over 10 minutes, I'll probably break it up into two sections that way, you know you know it's not some like a long 30 40 minute video you know so um but one thing i wanted to show you where, where work has started on mighty mascots number 10 now that plastic city is behind us we are starting to move forward with issue 10 me ian and anton are back and i have the cover to show you guys so let me let me show you this one i shared it on our live stream a few weeks ago and, you know, it doesn't have the logo and some of the artwork still needs a little bit of a touch up, but it's uh, it's happening. I'll zoom in a little closer, you know, and if you uh, don't know why Boom is all decked out like this, you may want to check out the last two issues of Mighty Mascots, number eight and nine to find out what happened here. But this is um, this is a milestone for me. No, issue number 10. I've never had 10 issues of anything. The most I've ever done is like three. So um, this issue is going to be an anniversary issue, the kind of the way, you know, Marvel and DC does it. It's going to be, you know, double, maybe even triple sized. It's going to have the main story, which should be the normal length, you know, anywhere from 24 to 30 pages. Might be longer because it's, you know, a milestone issue. But I also have a bunch of guest creators coming in to do Mighty Mascot little mini stories. And then I'll have, you know, pinups and, th and things like that, alternate covers. And we also will probably be doing the crowdfunding very soon for this. I don't have a date yet. I don't even have the, the um, pre-launch page up yet, but I want to get it in. I'd like to get it in, you know, maybe by September, October and get it funding, you know. Um, yeah, so we can get this going. All right. So that's cool. We um, So I just want to show you guys some of that. But it also, why don't we uh, bring up issue number two and let's take a look at that. So this is uh, this is going to be creator commentary for issue two. Uh, this was, you know, originally published with Alterna, but now it's back with me under Reckless Sidekick Productions. And uh, this is the second part of the storyline Trial by Fire, which was the first. So Mighty Mascot started off as a mini series, a three issue mini series. And this was issue two, the middle chapter of the storyline. And it was the second four, five, and six was supposed to be a mini series as well. But then Alterna decided to ditch Diamond and then, you know, doing monthly numbers so we just kept the numbering going so it just so happens the first uh six issues are two three-parters you know it just it was supposed to be that you know that way to kind of cheat the diamond system because you can get new number ones and you always get the sales boost at a number one you know and then people start to drop off with the the, the issues that come after it you know so but i love this cover this is uh you know ian um, he didn't do too much of a background, but I don't think it really needs it, you know, and I believe the original color of this was like a tan, but um, uh, we, we decided to make it a little more yellow so it would pop off, you know, when you saw it on a comic shelf. And I love this. It's a dust up between Flawless and Honey Flakes. And of course, uh, C-Rad is above watching with great concern. <laughs> And I actually like the the uh, the tagline here, "Brush with Danger." I thought that was really done well. Um, but yeah, everything is uh, fun. I like the corner box here. Everything now with my, I, I like I like the corner box idea. I love that from the old Marvel days and when Alterna did it too. So I kept that in the the mix for my issues as well. But yeah, so this is the big confrontation between the Crown Team and honey flakes and the mighty mascots so 
the issue starts off with this. Uh, so this is one one of the things in the comic that let me make it bigger here. So it was one of the moments that came to me when I was envisioning the entire story for the for Trial by Fire. I wanted to examine uh, Manny Coleman's anger issues, like um, in how it, and I wanted to show his past a little bit because he is a former child star, obviously based on Gary Coleman. So as you can see, instead of different strokes, we have different folks. <laughs> so that was my parody of the uh, Gary Coleman show. But in this, you, you, you get to see a snapshot, like you're, like you're actually watching the show back in 1983. And it's a scene with Manny Coleman and uh, Mr. Drumbond. Um, and it's, you, you get to see like those old sitcoms. Those are, they always had the, like the messaging about, you know, be a good person and things like that. You know, they would, they would be funny, but there would always be a moral, especially on stuff like different strokes. Um, and so I thought this would be a good one to highlight the lesson you can learn from, you know, keeping your anger in check and, and not overreacting to situations and things like that. So I uh, built a whole, you know, scene around it. And, uh, and I even had, you worked in Gary Coleman's uh, catchphrase here, except that, you know, I changed it. So, you know, lawsuits, you got to think about that kind of stuff. We, I think it would fall into parody anyways, but you never can be too careful. But then, you know, it, uh, it culminates into this part where it says, think about your ego before you do something you can't take back. So it's um, it's kind of like a little lesson. But then, you, as you see, it applies to this issue in detail with Manny himself as all this action's going on, which is kind of cool. Like I wanted to do little character things like that. Every issue, as you can see, if you've read four, five and six. There's a focus, strong focus on honey flakes. Um, and then eight and nine is strong focus on boom. So I like to do little things like that, feature different members of the team and put them through character arcs to strengthen their characters and, you know, progress them as characters. So, yeah, so we have the typical, uh, the main page here where you get the bull call, which is inspired obviously by. Uh, the Avengers and Marvel Comics when they used to do the Avengers roll call. So we have the bull call. So that's <laughs> like a fun little thing. Fun little nod to superhero comics and, um, you know, Saturday morning cartoons, obviously. And then uh, we we go to present day where Aunt Manny is losing his temper, which is, you know, the focus of the last scene there. And him and Mondo are getting into it because if you remember last issue, Mondo tried to stave the day and his ego and overconfidence caused the situation to get even worse. So now Manny and Mondo are clashing over it because Mondo would not listen to Manny last issue. And now they are having a big battle. Um, I did do the lettering for this uh, on these issues, and I think um, it's 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 not bad. It's very passable. I think all the stuff I've learned over with lettering over the last few years, I would have done a lot different some of this stuff. Uh, but I, I think it's very passable for you know a comic. So they they have their little argument, and then um, then we cut back to the team. So I try, you know, with a scene like this, you always want to establish where everybody's at and what's going on. You know, at the, the beginning of every issue, you should try to establish where characters are, things like that. So we see that the, the robots are still passed out from last issue. Because if you remember, once they form into their big form of Mega Crunch, uh, they can only hold that form for five minutes and then they have to go into a reboot mode like a sleep mode for, but as you can see, they're rebooting and it's at 34%. So this is also outside of the, the value venture parking lot where the Tarta creeps are building up in numbers once again. So, and then you see box of bear still fighting and Brewster actually getting into the mix as well. And I, you know, I love writing all these characters, Brewster's jokes. I really like writing and I always love getting, um, Boxer Bear, P 
PO'd and taken out people, you know? So, and then we um, also check in where Honey Flakes is at the end of issue one. He was being held by a bunch of Tarda creeps and now flawless and his gang are coming into the mix. And so what happened last issue where Mondo tried to create a mascot that would clean away Tartar, but you know, great plan, you know, get, get, get some dental mascots or dentistry mascots to have them take away Tartar. But of course the, the engineered evil, as they've been calling it in the book, kind of twisted the dental mascots in a way that they have to, cleanse everything like you know almost you know cleansing the earth just everything's dirty and they got to cleanse everything which means basically killing and destroying everything in their path so now we see Muckmouth, who started this whole debacle with his tartar creeps and then flawless who is the leader crown team and you know they have their different little uh banter back and forth as you can see here, Honey Flakes is starting to initiate a secret plan with Sea Rat to get out of this. As the rest of the mascots continue to fight, the robots are still down. And you can see Sea Rat up here in the distance getting the uh, signal from Captain Honey Flakes and ready to uh, attack. Sci-Fi for Me is about to take you on an incredible journey into the realms of science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Interviews with writers, filmmakers, artists, and actors. Conventions and fandom. Previews and reviews of movies and television. Sci-Fi for Me is working to be the most popular science fiction magazine in the solar system. Subscribe now and enter the fantastic world of Sci-Fi for Me, delivering the multiverse since 2009.